exposure units have certain characteristics. One of those characteristics is there's a point light source. And I've done a little drawing here to show what I'm talking about. Here's your light, and the light is shining directly at the object, which in this case is an eye with a dot on the top. And what we want in the screen is exactly that image, same size, shape, and if we have the light going directly at the image, that light is going to cast a shadow on the emulsion, which is the exact same size and shape as the object, in this case an eye. That's a point light source, and I will tell you that's going to be 21 inches or more away from the object. Now, what's my option? My option would be to have a bank of lights like fluorescent lights, closer, not 21 inches, but maybe 6 inches. And they're all going to be shining at that eye also. And what they do is they shine behind the object, and as a result, the emulsion behind the object is exposed. It's called undercutting. And therefore, fine details like half-tone dots, thin lines, any other details may not wash out of the screen. That's the problem with having light bulbs so close and so large, as opposed to being a small, powerful point light source. When you have this kind of a setup, your only defense is to use high mesh counts and thin emulsion. That might work, but it's really not the right solution. The right solution is to have the light further away. Okay, here's another issue, however. When you move the light further away, you've got the rays going in all directions, and if we take a cross section, this would look like a circle that big. But if we go further away and take the cross section, the circle gets a lot larger. So this light is having to fill that area. And when the area gets larger, but the light put out by this bulb is the same in the large area as the small area, that means the amount of light in that large area is much reduced. So what that tells us is, as you move the point light source away from the object, we have to have a stronger light. And that light must be stronger by the square to area. So if you double the distance, you have to square the area, or square the light wattage. In simple terms, that means this light should be 1,000 watts or more. Now, what happens if you don't use 1,000 watts? You use, say, 500. Can you expose a screen? Yes. What's the difference? Well, if I use 500 watts, it'll probably take me on the order of 30 minutes to expose the screen. But if I use 1,000 watts, we're probably talking 3 minutes. 3 minutes versus 30 minutes. Now, the actual time that you experience depends on what manufacturer's emulsion, how thick it is, the mesh count, a variety of other factors. But you are that order of difference. So you're better off going out and getting a 1,000 watt bulb. Where do I find these bulbs? Well, fixtures with a light bulb are made for outdoor lighting, like parking lots outside of buildings. They're typically 220 volt. And you can get them with very small bulbs in them. And that's what you want And what, um, in order to get the wattage to cover the area. What is this light? And the answer is UV light, ultraviolet light. What is the best source? Actually, the sun. The problem is, today is a cloudy day. And what happens if I'm making screens at night? I need to have a reliable source of light, so we use artificial light. The best source of UV light is metal halide. Very hard to find. Don't even bother to look. So you go with the next available, which is halogen or quartz. That's also UV light. However, with those lights, some of the electrical energy is converted to heat, so it's less efficient. It works, it's just a little less efficient. So you're going to have some heat, and that way you want to mount this light underneath the glass and leave the sides open so you can release the heat. And you may even want to put a fan underneath the glass pointing up at the glass to help keep the glass cool. How do I make one of these units? Well, you take a 2x4 like this, take a strip of wood, screw it in there just below the edge so you can place a piece of glass on top of that edge. And you'd have four sides, just like this, all screwed together, and the inside dimension would match the outside dimension of your glass. So you're resting the glass in, inside this frame. Then use some 2x4s for legs, have X-bracing so it's not rickety, 
and you're in business. You've got a homemade exposure unit with the light underneath, 21 inches, and the sides are open to release the heat. That's how you make the exposure unit. Once you've built one of these units, you want to know how long does it take to expose the emulsion. And the answer to that is simple. You get what's known in the industry as an exposure unit, or also called a step wedge kit. They cost about $35, and you can measure how long it takes to expose the emulsion or capillary film that you're using. Now, this is homemade unit. Your budget for this is about $50 if you shop carefully. If you go out and you buy top of the line professional unit, you're going to get you're going to probably get a new arc unit because they are the best, and you're going to spend three or four thousand dollars, and they're absolutely top notch units, and they have features that you will not have. For example, a vacuum holdout. We don't have a vacuum holdout, so we're going to put a pile of books or some sort of weight on top of the mesh of the screen to press that mesh against the glass. But new arc gives you a nice vacuum holdout. They have some other nice features. The light is trapped in a box. You can have unexposed screens in the room without exposing those screens while the light is on. And they have a timing device on the unit so you can set the time. And of course they have metal halide, which is a more efficient bulb than what we're using. So the Newark units are really nice, but you don't want three or four thousand dollar price tag to be the, uh, separating you from getting into the business or not getting into the business. So you may want to make your own unit, get started, and then someday when you have available funds, go buy one of those really nice units. So that's what it takes to have the best exposure unit available in the screen printing industry.